We won a victory so big that you can see it from the moon and you can certainly see it from Brussels. Lovely stuff. I've missed this kind of rhetoric in politics. Now Nigel Farage joins us. Nigel, good day. I think Donald Trump must have written those lines <laughs> because it sounded a bit like him. I mean, look, you know, Orban uh, is, has always had a degree of pariah status, and that's even uh, more so now, given his stance on the war in Ukraine. So he finds himself actually even without his American allies beside him. Um, even the Visegrad group appears to yeah. be split. But here's the point. This is about national sovereignty. Uh, Victor is all for national sovereignty. Uh, the Brussels dig at the end was really interesting. Liberation once wrote that Nigel Farage's Brussels is worst nightmare because he wants to leave the European Union. Ten years later, they wrote, Victor Orban's an even bigger nightmare because he wants to stay. So <laughs> Hungary, so, so Hungary is still, take, <laughs> still taking EU money. Um, yeah. Look, it's a big win against the globalists. And how entertaining that Mr Verhofstadt, uh, that former Belgian oh, yeah. prime minister, well known in the United Kingdom, uh, thinks that sovereignty is paramount in Ukraine. Oh, exactly. But oh, exactly. Not, but not in Hungary. No. So, yeah, it is a big win for the Conservative movement, whether you like Orban or not. And he was quite pointed, actually. He talked about George Soros, mm. of course, in his speech. Soros, Hungarian-born, and has been funding many campaigns um, against, against him over the years. Hey, it's a big win for Victor. Do you think what's gone on in Ukraine will have given him an extra boost at the polls as well? People, frankly, fundamentally a bit scared in that part of the world. But, but actually, he's all been about strong borders. And... You know, that's, that's, that's necessary at the moment, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, that, that might have helped him. I think what would have hurt him is the rift with Poland. Right. Because Hungary and Poland have been very, very closely together in all their fights with Brussels over the last few years. And, of course, there is a very major rift over Ukraine, over Russia, over Putin. Um, you know, but whichever way you look at it, you know, this guy is a strong, popular, conservative national leader. And the globalists can't stand it. 